Today's video exposes passengers that are using controversial hacks to enhance their travel experience and save some money, often at the expense of others. Stay tuned as we dive into what these strategies are and how they might impact you on your next flight. One of the most controversial travel trends of 2024 is disability faking. And yes, it's as bad as it sounds. Some travelers falsely claim to have disabilities to gain priority boarding on airlines. For example, a person might request a wheelchair to bypass long lines and ensure that there will be space for their carry-on luggage in the overhead bin, even though they don't actually need any mobility assistance. This tactic can be particularly advantageous on airlines like Southwest, where there are no assigned seats, allowing these disability fakers to not only secure overhead bin space, but to also choose the best seats on the plane, like those that are closer to the front of the economy section. Fox News recently covered the controversy around people pretending to have disabilities to board planes first and how it's going to lead to big problems if it continues to happen. This misuse might lead to tougher rules, where everyone claiming to have a disability may be required to show proof, making travel more difficult for those who actually do have a disability and require additional assistance. And if you think that's bad, just wait until we get to number six on the list. I have a feeling it's going to tick you off just as much. A sneaky tactic emerging on airlines with open seating, like Southwest, involves one passenger purchasing priority boarding to secure seats for a whole group of travelers. Southwest Airlines offers an optional paid service where travelers can pay extra to board the plane early. This service is often used by travelers to secure better seats since Southwest doesn't assign seats in advance. Instead, seats are chosen on a first-come, first-served basis. A controversial but seemingly effective hack involves only one member of a traveling group paying for this priority boarding option. Once that passenger is on board, they will pick not only the best seat for themselves, but they'll also save seats for the rest of their group who have not paid for priority boarding. This hack gets taken a step further when travelers are saving seats for passengers that never actually board the flight. Let me explain. On airlines where seats are not assigned, some solo travelers will place personal items on the seat beside them pretending that they are saving the seat for someone else, only to enjoy the extra space as it remains unoccupied at takeoff. There are cases of people placing their backpacks on the seats to quietly reserve them, as well as some more disgusting ways of claiming the seat, such as placing tissues on them. Gross and not appreciated. Assuming the flight isn't full, this tactic can get you more space or even an entire row of seats to yourself. And even on full flights, passengers are using this technique to influence who it is that ends up sitting down beside them. For example, they might remove the item and free up the seat beside them when they see someone coming who they would prefer to sit beside, such as a small passenger that would not be infringing on their space. Southwest Airlines doesn't have an official policy prohibiting the saving of seats, which leaves the rest of us to navigate this sketchy situation on our own which can impact the ability to find a good seat or even create tension on board if you do decide to confront a seat saver. Travelers have discovered another clever but extremely controversial hack to ensure that they have extra room on flights where seats are pre-assigned. Travelers are scoring extra space by booking a seat or two next to their own with fully refundable tickets and then canceling those tickets right before the flight's departure. This tactic is particularly attractive on long flights in economy class, as having an extra seat beside you free, or even a whole row to yourself, can make a big difference in comfort. Airlines like JetBlue, which allow cancellations right up until the plane departs, make this tactic relatively risk-free. However, while it might seem like a smart move for one person, it's causing quite a few problems for the rest of us. Booking and then canceling multiple seats can lead to potential revenue losses for the airline as those seats could have been sold to other paying customers that were actually planning to show up. And while you might not care about the airline losing money, I'm honestly not that sympathetic, you will probably care that these passengers that are booking fake tickets are likely driving up the flight price for everyone else on the plane, including you. Airlines adjust ticket costs based on how many people they think are flying, and fake bookings can make flights look fuller than they actually are, 
which is going to drive up the cost of the tickets. An even worse situation than having to pay a higher price for your flight ticket would be not being able to get a ticket on the flight at all because it appears fully booked due to fake reservations. There are several hacks that are circulating on social media that encourage passive-aggressive behavior to enhance your own flight comfort at the expense of other passengers. One hack to be aware of involves a passenger coughing on the armrest to deter another passenger from using it. An even more popular hack going viral on TikTok shows how to stop the person in front of you from reclining their seat on a flight. If someone reclines their seat too much, leaving you cramped, the trick is to turn the air conditioner nozzle above your seat to full blast and aim it at their head. This is meant to encourage them to move their seat back up. Passengers claim that they have successfully used this technique in situations where the passenger in front of them ignored the request to put their seat upright or insisted that they had the right to recline. The idea is that if someone insists on reclining their seat, then you too have the right to use the air vent above you in whatever way you see fit. There is an ongoing and heated debate over whether you should be able to recline your seat on an airplane given how limited the legroom is for the passenger behind you. Let us know down in the comments if you believe you have the right to recline assuming the airline seat allows for it. And if you are enjoying this video so far, definitely hit that subscribe button as it's a free way to support the channel and it also ensures that you never miss out on a video. In a similar tone to the disability fakers that we exposed in the first point, we are seeing more and more cases of fake service animals in the plane cabin. Some travelers have found a loophole to avoid pet fees and ensure their dogs can fly with them in the cabin by registering them as service animals. Airlines will typically charge extra for small pets in the cabin or they will require any larger animals to travel in the cargo hold. However, service animals are allowed in the cabin at no extra charge because they provide essential assistance to their owners. By claiming that your pet is a service animal, even if it isn't, travelers are able to dodge these restrictions and fees. In the United States, it's relatively simple to get an animal qualified as a service animal. Owners can register their pets online through various services that issue certificates and badges, often without rigorous checks. Providing proof to airlines usually requires just a letter or a form stating the animal's role as a service animal. The ease of certification has led to an increase in pets being falsely presented as service animals on flights. This situation is problematic because it not only undermines the genuine need for legitimate service animals, but it also creates potential safety and comfort issues for other passengers. Even a friendly dog like Ollie, who's perfect, would be wagging his tail and trying to say hi to everyone within a two meter radius, while a legitimate service animal would not. It's important to know that passengers are not the only ones that are engaging in clever and controversial practices. I'll put a video on the screen now and link it in the description that reveals some questionable tactics by gate agents, including how they earn a commission for every carry-on bag that they force you to check in at the gate. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join us back here for more travel tips and hacks each week, and I'll see you in that next video soon. Bye.